This is a travesty. No one should vote for this. This is a sad day. The curtain is coming down on this House because the majority has no idea about process and procedure. Trying to put a ribbon on a sham process doesn't make it any less of a sham. When you look through this resolution and you see how one-sided, how Soviet style this is running, this is the United States of America. Don't run a sham process, a tainted process like this resolution ensures. That's about how that went today. A former Republican congressman, Justin Amash of Michigan, voted with the Democrats on today's resolution. Before today's vote, the now independent posted, quote, this president will be in power for only a short time, but excusing his misbehavior will forever tarnish your name. To my Republican colleagues, step outside your media and social bubble. History will not look kindly on disingenuous, frivolous, and false defenses of this man. Tonight, we welcome back to our broadcast, Steve Schmidt, former Republican strategist who's worked for, among others, Dick Cheney, George W. Bush, John McCain. He has since left the Republican Party and is now back with us from having consulted for the now former independent political campaign of Howard Schultz. My friend, I want to start you off with how consequential you think today was and then talk about these times we're living in right now. What does this mean? What, what we see right now, what we know happened, is, in my eyes, a profound abuse of power by the president of the United States, who called a foreign head of state, withheld U.S. military aid, asked for the foreign head of state to launch an investigation into a U.S. citizen to aid his campaign for 2020, that citizen happening to be the son of a political opponent. If you can do that, to the former vice president of the United States. It means you can do that to anybody. And if that's OK to ask a foreign head of state to investigate an American citizen, that means it's OK for the president of the United States to see someone say on television who doesn't like the criticism of him and order the IRS, let's say, to investigate them or to target that individual with the Department of Justice. In a constitutional republic where the rule of law is supreme, that's simply unacceptable. The president is a president, not an emperor. So what we saw today is deeply discouraging because what it indicates is that the Constitution, which is the document that all of these members have sworn an oath to preserve, protect, to uphold, to defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that that oath is subordinate to their loyalty to a man, to a person, to a party. And those should be subordinate to their constitutional obligations. And you look at the Capitol Dome and you think about what an honor it is to be sent to Washington by the people of the 50 states to serve the national interest, to be a steward for a brief time of the constitutional republic that was birthed in 1787. And that republic has often been referred to as the American experiment because no republic has endured. And so here we stand at an hour where there's a question on the table. And the question is, is the president above the law? Is there any behavior that would be viewed as intolerable by this Republican minority in the House of Representatives. And if the answer to that is no, then what that means is the checks and balances of our system created by the geniuses in Philadelphia has been obliterated in the year 2019. So this is a profoundly important moment. So we're about to find out if Kevin McCarthy, if Mitch McConnell believe in everything you just laid out. I think we will. I think it's very important that the president's most vocal critics be the most vociferous voices for demanding that this be done properly and that the president be accorded the appropriate levels of due process, that he be treated fairly. Right? That, that is essential to this. But if this is to be on a partisan basis, what that means is that the impeachment 
which is constitutionally mandated, and Alexander Hamilton writes about it in the Federalist Papers in 65 and 66, what it means is the impeachment would be viewed as illegitimate by half the country. And that's a disaster mm -hmm. for this country. We are one people, and we're all in it together. But what this will do in the end on a party line vote is just exacerbate the divisions and increase the hostility between what has become two warring tribes in Washington, D.C. But nowhere in this does there seem to be any deference to the national interest and to the oath. And interestingly, the people that are coming forward and testifying at great risk and are talking with alarm about what they saw, those are the people who have sacrificed the most. Those are the people who have taken the oath to the Constitution and have been wounded in combat, for example, um, that have served on the front lines in harm's way. And they're standing up for the American Republic and what they view as a grave abuse of power by this president. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.